Hey, it's a boy, Sergeant Hooked on Heroes, hitting you with another brand spanking review slash recap for Comrade Geats episode 40. A uh, pretty intense episode overall, one that's definitely going to be kind of changing up the... Sorry, my hair is a little wild today. Oh, there it is. Get going out. Uh, definitely setting up a uh, new status quo, you know, going forward um, as far as an arc for Kawa. And um, a little bit of a dark return for him. We'll, we'll get into the details here in a minute. Um... Yeah, so we start the episode with a, um, at the end of the last one, clearly Geats was protecting Nago from the oncoming um, Jamato, right? Um, and as you know, with his new DGP setup, it's basically anybody that wants to be a rider can if they want to, that hasn't been one before or whatever, um, but they don't have to. And there's no like wish to be gained from anything, it's just wiping out the Jamato and kind of cleaning up the last little bits of the uh, original you know, future people and DGP staff or whatever. And so... Uh, Geats, of course, you know, Geats, you know, he's, you know, aced in Geats 9 form, protecting Nago. Uh, we get to hear the insert theme for it really well, um, and him just completely demolish the Jamato and destroy the little seeds that come out of him. Um, talking about with her that he'll make sure he keeps her safe, and then he gives her a world where she can, you know, find her true happiness, and blah, blah, blah. And so, um, he does that, untransforms afterwards, and, uh, um, is approached by K1 and Michinaga, who want a word with him. They decide they want to join back up as riders. And he tells them, well, what, why is this? He asks them. They say, well, you know, um, Mishinaga says there's, you know, still trash left to clean up after the uh, um, uh, staff left. And we know that our supporters, Baraba and Kikoro, are still around somehow. They must have gotten a wish from the goddess at the last point, at the last minute, and um, to stay around past the grand end. And this is news to Ace. He had no idea about this. And Kayla says, you know, uh, um, the goddess wasn't able to atone for her sins, so all I have left now is to, you know, help, to, to still help people. Like, I can't really bring back the lives of the people lost and everything like that, but I can still do something good with my time and, and be a rider and help out. And he's like, okay, and whatever, and kind of understands and, you know, gives them their drivers and everything. And uh, uh, Kayla asks for more buckles, and they don't really have access to a lot. Again, it's interesting that it, that it's set up that way because you would think that Ace, being a, a god of creation now, would be able to kind of, you know, not really do whatever, but create some more stuff for them to use or whatever. But I also understand they don't want to make him too godly to where he can just, why doesn't he just fix all the problems, just delete everybody from existence and recreate them how he wants them. You know what I mean? So um, they decide to join back up, knowing that they will not have any kind of, you know, wish that they're going to be getting, you know, as, re as a reward. Uh, they want to help, and, and uh, Michinaga does too, actually, which is really cool to see this turn for him, that he's always kind of been about protecting people and just going about it in kind of the wrong way. Um, so after this, we get Kawa telling Sarah about it, um, and Sarah is mad that he's going to be doing it again, but knows that he can't really turn a blind eye to, like, people in need, right? She's like, well, if you're going to be a writer and it makes no money, then I'll be the one that'll go out and get a job and, you know, make ends meet. And she's all, like, you know, being goofy and, like, hands on her hips, being all cute and everything. And it's clearly, like, red flag, red flag, death flag, all episode. And we'll get there um, as to why. But uh, she has her little, like, hair clip scrunchy thing. She gives it to him. And this stuck out to me because of what the shape is of a new buckle coming soon for a certain character. We'll get to in a minute. But he, he kind of keeps it with him. And uh, she goes off to find a new job. And she's interviewing or whatever. And uh, at this time, also, Baraba and Kikara are approached by Jeet. Jeet um, and Samus give him give them their own uh, their new laser race riser cards, the King and Queen Premium Black cards, uh, available now at Premium Bandai. I'm just kidding, uh, maybe I don't know, but uh, supposedly giving them hoping physical rider suit forms. I don't really know, but just more power to help out with what's going on. So they, of course, they decide to uh, to join to help the DGP get rid of Geats and whatever, and they go to Daichi. And they're talking with him because now Daichi that he's been brought back is new thing is, you know, helping to, you know, cultivate these new Jamato. And he pulls up a, one of the little baby, you know, infant little fetus he looking ones and like takes a bite out of it and eats it and like absorbs it. So like now he's part Jamato, just like Archimedal was. Um, I don't know. Daichi has always been kind of annoying to me. Like I liked him during the Dizza Star arc, but I don't really like that they're just making him just Archimedal 2.0. Because it doesn't make any sense why he all of a sudden would be interested in the Jamato in any way. If they would have worked harder during the arc where he was working with Baraba and Michinaga to show that he was like interested in them more than what he showed, then I would be like, oh, okay, this makes sense. But it just kind of feels like they just want to have another villain to throw in there to have someone for you know people to go after, you know, to be like a rival or like an obstacle, you know, a nemesis. 
Um, so he can he has his own Jamato form, and he's created this new form of the Jamato little parasite things that are stronger, a bunch more of them that are stronger. He's cultivated more. So he decides to help them. She even barely even at one point picks up his uh, ID course. She get back to him. She's like, you're not going to use this? Like, I don't need that anymore. And because he eats the baby thing, whatever. So Sarah goes to interview, and it goes very poorly. Uh, but, I mean, it, it's going decent. And then um, she also ends up um, saving some people. There's some people there that are getting attacked by Jamato. She goes to help. And Daichi shows up, tells her a little bit about what's going on, kind of. And he doesn't look like he normally does with the weird face paint and everything. He's um, like in his like how he normally looks with his glasses and everything, trying to like keep her safe. She's just really confused by that. Um, and we know what's going on. And so um, he's not on the up and up. And so we also get a scene with um, Nago this week going to meet up with her mom, with uh, um, Mama, uh, uh, what is the name of that? Was that the Karama Foundation? Yeah. And we see in the news that her dad has been fully pulled up on counts of, you know, lying to the government and sabotage and spying and blah, blah, blah. And uh, she tries to apologize to Neon. She tells her straight up that she is sorry for trying to replace her daughter with Neon. And that if she ever felt any kind of way, like any kind of time that she showed any kind of love towards her, that she, she now is realizing it was genuine. Even though she was uncomfortable with the idea, she really did actually truly love Neon. And Neon kind of accepts this, but kind of just wants to do her own thing still. And she has her, you know, she, she's like begging her, stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. And Neon's like, I'm, 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 I'm all right. I got a friend that's going to help me out. We're good, which you'll see. So... Pretty good scene back and forth thing, and I like that Nago's still kind of involved. I'm interested to see, like, if her arc will be next in terms of getting, you know, her ID core back and power up and whatever. Um, but anyway, so, uh, like I said, Jamato are attacking or whatever, and Kewa and Mitch and Nago go out to help. Kewa's fighting some along with uh, Ace, so they're going after Daichi to really find out what's going on because they don't clearly believe him, what, what he's talking about. Um, and uh, they confront him. They realize he's, you know, part Jamato now and that he messed with shit. And, you know, he's messing with the Jamato and making them into the parasites. And he's kind of standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with them, which kind of bothers me. I don't like it in a show when they set up the, the idea that a character has attained godhood and there's still others that are able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. Kind of means that you're not a god anymore, I guess. I don't know. It, it, it's fine. But it's just kind of like how powerful is, how much more powerful is Daichi that is compared to Archimedal or other, like, villains in the show so far. So anyway... He's doing that, but it's really just a long game of just trying to keep them busy while things are happening around Sarah. So, Mijinaka goes in. He's fighting some of the Jamato right near where Sarah was fighting, right? We don't see Sarah. And she's kind of gone. And she actually sent some kind of ominous text to Kawa about, like, um, basically kind of letting him know sort of what happened. I'm pretty sure it was Daichi using her phone to do it. And you'll see why. So, Mijinaka's fighting some of the Jamato and everything. He transforms. He fights, whatever. He's like, hey, get out of here. I'm going to help out. And um, one bursts out of this, like, cocoon thing and fights them. It's a little bit stronger than they normally have been. And he's fighting it and everything. And uh, Kawa finally realizes from Daiji giving a few little hints here and there what's going on. That he did something to Sarah. Something related to the Jamato spirits. You know, not spirits. Uh, parasites. He did something to Sarah. So he books it out of there. Leaves Geats to take care of Daiji. Daiji, you know, he says, go. I got this. Like, go find your sister. And... He gets there and he sees Mishinaga defeat a Jamato and the Jamato powers down essentially and it's Sarah. Come to find out, Daichi let out a bunch of the Jamato parasites out of his little jar thing and they all went inside her body. When it's normally level one, you can expel the parasite, destroy it, they're good. When they're defeated, you know, they, they, they go back to human, the parasite comes out, you kill it, it's gone. When it's level two, not so not, not possible. They die along with it. So... Michinaga's responsible for the death of an innocent person. The exact thing that's been at the backbone of his motivation as a character. Everything about him has been about this whole thing with Toru. Where Toru was, you know, in his eyes, you know, and it clearly was, kind of maliciously, you know, uh, injured and killed by these other riders. And that started his whole thing of wanting the power to destroy all riders. And um, he sees that he took an innocent life and it shatters him you see him instantly when she turns back to being sarah he's like like oh fuck i didn't oh god so carolyn's in he sees and he runs to her and he's holding her and she's like kawa i'm sorry i i gotta no i, I can't go yet I got, i'm trying to keep the world safe she's all reiterating things he said to her right she's his big brother she's he's her big brother and so she's like everything he does she wants to do kind of a thing you know in a way he had an influence on her and she says, you know, don't lose hope and blah, blah, blah. Please, you know, you have to stay, you know, stay, 
you know, good and, you know, and, and, and still save people and blah, blah, blah. And she's gone. She disappears into the ground and she's gone. Kawa looks up and sees Michinaga straight up asks him, did you do this? Were you the one that killed my sister? And his shock turns to kind of condemnation and he goes, yeah, it was me. There's nothing else he can say. He was responsible technically. It's mainly Daichi and I'm sure once we get into more of this arc here with Kawa, it'll be him hunting down and fucking executing Daichi at this point. Um, but it shatters him. He's screaming. He is crying. He is absolutely in pieces. It starts to rain. And um, we see, uh, <clears throat> what's her name? Uh, Sumori praying again, just like she was when she brought back Ace. And she's praying and he still has her, uh, still has uh, Sarah's um, like hair thing, you know, her, her barrette thing, whatever, in his hand. And it resembles the shape of the Shogun Buckle, which is his new form, Tycoon Shogun. Um, <clears throat> we also did get a small scene earlier in the episode, real quick, I just want to go back to, where Jeet, me, or, uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, Punk Jack meets up with Jeet and Samus uh, to kind of confront them or whatever and find out what's going on. And um, they, like, fight a little bit, and he kind of lets, lets Punk Jack go for some reason. Then he says, you know, let them protect their protector, whatever, blah, blah, blah. We're still going to do whatever we can to sap every bit of life and hope out of Samuri so we can make her into our second generation goddess of, of creation. So that is their entire plan. Their entire plot is focusing on Samuri, pushing her to become this, cre this goddess of creation. Um, and now we've seen two instances of her using her powers when she brought back Ace around the time of, you know, Michinaga winning the original, the one DG, the, the Desire Grand Prix, you know, the, the, sorry, the JGP. Um, and then also, um, right now, creating the Shogun Buckle. Um, <clears throat> and that's how we end the episode. Sarah's gone. Kawa is shattered. And we end it like that. I was impressed they did this. I really was. To take a character like Kawa that's always been very stalwart, very positive, very, you know, there's always a bright side, we have a plan, we gotta do this. To break him, it's gonna be really interesting to see where he goes from here. Now, I don't quite feel like there's enough time to give enough of a storyline as good as this to Michinaga for his final form and also to Neon. So it might be really quick with those, I'm thinking. I don't know if there is enough time. Maybe there is and I'm wrong. I don't know. But... I'm really excited to see where this goes. Tycoon Shogun is a fucking beautiful final form, and I never thought it was going to look that great because I really thought it was just going to be Kit Bash Magoo like most of these are. Um, but it isn't from what I've seen. And it's also not clear if it has the same functionality as the Geats 9 buckle. Um, let's see here. Yeah. As the Geats 9 buckle where it's like, you know, folded together, it's Mark 3, and then you pull it apart, and then it's Mark 9. If it, And then the Revolve On flips it over, you know that might have some functionality that way. We haven't actually physically seen the DX toy yet at all. Um, I think it debuts next week, so we'll probably see more images of it this next coming week. Um, but this was a fantastic episode. Hard-hitting, emotional, really good setup and pull-off from last week's episode into this new arc for Kawa and where that's going to go for him. Um, I really enjoy kind of the direction they're going here. And, you know, villain-wise, we're doing better. You know, I, I, I think that Jeet and the rest of the staff are decent threats. I don't think Sudadu is gone entirely. But I do want to see what the ending, end game final boss ends up really being. Because there's a few different players here. Daiji for the Jamato, you know, Jeet, Sudadu to an extent, and what have you. So I'm kind of interested in seeing where they go with that. But overall, this is a fantastic episode. I would probably rate it somewhere around a strong 9 out of 10. Um, I only would have given it more points if we would have had... A bit more with um, Michinaga in the episode. I think he deserved a little more time. And also um, a bit more with Sarah before she untie her untimely demise. Uh, but yeah, so uh, let me know in the comments below. What do you guys think of this week's episode of Comrade of Geeks? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you in the middle? Um, what were your favorite moments? What's been your favorite moments in the series so far? I love to see the conversations going. Really appreciate you guys um, liking, commenting, sharing, watching the videos, commenting. Please keep on, keep on. That that definitely helps to support the channel. It means a lot to me. Um, we're right under 500 subs, which is about the minimum you need to be at to start along with, uh, I think, 3,000 or 1,500, whatever it is, watch hours, which I'm nowhere near, uh, to be monetized, which would be cool, but also I'm not like going to stress over getting to that goal, maybe for the Henshins and Homies podcast channel, but for this, it's more of like a fun thing. But if I got there, that'd be cool too. If they could just on its own make money, that'd be great. Um, but again, 
I really thank you guys for all the love and support. It really means a lot. As far as content this week, it's going to be pretty content light. This is probably the main thing I'm going to be putting out. Um, I probably will do some stuff pretty soon about uh, Secret Invasion, Episode 1, uh, for Marvel Secret Invasion on Disney+. Plus. Um, and a few other things. I'm trying to kind of come up with some ideas and things like that. Uh, as far as the show, we're actually recording as of this date, uh, Saturday, today, at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're having Josh Living Ranger Key on. Um, and we're talking about the good, the bad, and the not painted Lightning Collection, <laughs> along with our dream Lightning Collection figures. So it should be a pretty good time on the Henshins and Homies podcast. Again, available anywhere you can get a podcast at, pretty much, or live every, uh, usually Friday, but this is a special time of Saturday because the guests needed this time. Uh, uh, Fridays, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We go live on YouTube um, for the podcast, and you can listen to us as, as, a, as just an audio podcast if you'd like after that. Or watch it archived afterwards. Works as well. But um, thank you guys so much for the love support. I really do appreciate it. But until next time, stay hooked on them heroes. I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.